Hey there. I'm zoomed in really close up today. I, I have this, um, I'll zoom out just a little bit. My table is really filthy. It's time for me to change my butcher paper. This was the painting that I did um, that was, uh, I don't know, several videos back because I do quite a bit of videos. I paint several paintings a day if I can because if I can, I'm an artist full time. But um, this one had a, a kind of a big gap in the black area. And so I wanted to uh, just show you how I'm embellishing it. But before I started that, I just had to show you a couple of other things. First of all, this is that um, the bright, vivid blue that I love so much that I poured on a piece of round. It's probably a 12 inch. It's pretty thick. It's probably three quarters of an inch. So I've never done a clock before. I'm going to make my first clock. So I've got it marked in the back where the hole is going to be drilled. And today I bought the uh, clock movement kit and the little numbers. Uh, and this came from, I think, Michael's. I used my half off coupon on that. It was like eight bucks for the, the kit and another. This came from Hobby Lobby. I think it was two, two and a half dollars. So um, I'm going to make my first clock, and I haven't sealed it yet. It's kind of got a satin finish just from the paint, and I'm going to give it a glossy coat with probably something like Liquitex high gloss varnish, or spray it. I'll, I could spray it. It just depends on the weather. That's a lot of times why I don't use spray is because you have to have good weather to do it outside or in a ventilated area. And the thing I like about Liquitex is you can do it in your home and not worry about anything. It's water-based, all that good stuff. But I just love the, uh, the richness of this color. And when I put that glossy finish on it, it's going to make it pop even more. So I'm doing my first clock. And then people ask about sealing canvases too and I was going to just show you a comparison if I can. This I love doing swiping, that's why I did this one, so I like to do that. Um, I did kind of like a peacock series of color, you know, these same color tones, golds and teal and this one had purple down here, the, the long one. This was sprayed with a gloss varnish and I was going to try to show you, let me turn it to the black and it has, it's what you call in the art world an orange peel effect. So you see where it's kind of got, it's got those little dimples in it. So it's nice and glossy from the um, the spray paint, but that's one of the little side effects sometimes of the spray gloss that I have. <clears throat> now this was done with just one coat of Liquitex high gloss varnish, just one coat. And if you put two or three coats, it's going to get even smoother and smoother. And on this one, you don't have that effect. You do see the texture of the canvas because I don't gesso my canvases. I just take them straight out of the package and pour over them. I don't, I don't care if the texture shows, but I just wanted to show you that's just one coat of the Liquitex high gloss varnish. And a bottle of that really goes a long way. I just ordered another 32 ounce bottle, which will last for months and months, but um, it's expensive. It's, goodness, $40, $35, $40. And uh, I, I ordered mine from Utrecht, U-T-R-E-C-H-T. And also, I think I have it on my Amazon link below in the video, the Liquitex high gloss varnish. But I ordered it from Utrecht. Um, you have to pay for shipping, but I think it's maybe 
$22 for a 32 ounce bottle which is the best price that I've seen out there so um, I just wanted to show you this is just one coat but it's it's a pretty good gloss it it seals it enough to bring out the color when it kind of looks dull after it's dried, it seals it enough to bring out the color, but you don't have a super, super glossy effect unless you put several coats on. But this is pretty shiny for one coat. With the sponge brush, and it took literally less than a minute to, to coat it. And the neat thing about the sponge brush is, after I coat it, I put the sponge brush in a Ziploc bag. I don't rinse it. I just leave it in a Ziploc bag and it'll last for a month and I don't have to rinse it in between using it on different pieces. <clears throat> so I wanted to show you this and this is not sealed. You can see the um, kind of the matte or dull look you know in areas and then of course the the gold has got some shimmer to it. <clears throat> but anyway, I was starting to do this and I thought, well, why don't I just record it and show you what I, you know, am doing with this. So I have its Pentel Metallic Medium and it's a gel pen. So it's metallic gold. So you write with it just like a regular pen and I was just doodling in the middle and I thought well you know I'm gonna I'm gonna show this on a video just to give you an idea what you can do with your pore paintings when if you do a swipe and it's missing some action you know and I also have the original cup of gold paint that I mixed up with ruddy ready the duck on it here. Um, this was some takeout cup but I use it to keep my paints in. So it still has the gold in it but the gold had you know Floetrol and silicone and that kind of stuff. So I put a little bit in a small cup and this is like a little paper cup. It's kind of damp right now but um, it's got more of the actual real uh, gold that I used and it's um, in a little cup for me to use. and I've got my little thing of water to rinse and I've got me a, a bigger, it's a small brush, but it's a that's bigger one and then it's a really fine one. It's down to a little point right there that I can do fine detail with. And um, I was painting out or drawing out this gold and I thought well I don't know if you can tell this right here. These, where's my finger here? I gotta find the side of my fingers on. These little spots I painted in with the gold paint myself. So you could actually go in with your bigger brush and paint in little shapes that are similar to the, you know, these all around if you want to with the gold paint if you want to fill it in a little bit here and there but I kind of like the idea of doing some doodles and that's what I was doing with the gel pen and then I thought you know I should just actually use the paint that I used on the canvas so I'm gonna, I may use that too but this dries instantly which is the nice part about it so I was just coming around and doing some little whimsical what I would call tendrils, just little designs. Um, and this color is not exactly like the gold, but it's close enough to where it works okay. So I was just doing this and I thought if you wanted to watch me, just to give you a few ideas of something that you could do with your canvas if you had some areas that you needed to fill in.
So if you just want to watch while I doodle, you're welcome to do. So I'm just you, you just come up with little patterns and you know vary it just a little bit here and there. But you want to be kind of repetitive with your design so it all. So I'm basically just doing some small line work. I know there's gold sharpies too, and I'm not sure what effect they would have on a painting like this. I don't know how gold they would come out or if they would even really show up on top of a, a little bit of a glossy glass, uh, gla on top of a little bit of a glossy back. I can't speak. On top of a little bit of a glossy black background. And you know, it can be just little funky shapes. There's all kinds of things that you can do. So basically, I wanted to show you too if I just use my paint that I originally used. I can come in here and uh, I can actually, you know, fill in areas if I want. And with metallic gold, sometimes you have to, the paint, you have to go over it when you're painting just a regular painting and not one where you've poured it. Sometimes you have to go over the gold more than once because sometimes metallic golds in the acrylics can be a little bit on the transparent side. I could even take it and do the line work over what I've already done if I wanted to. It just makes a thicker line because this is a fine tip brush, but you know, you can you can't get it but so fine when it's on the brush. Unless you're dealing with an ink pen. But there was like some areas where the gold just kind of faded out and you can just go to those areas and fill it in with the gold paint. So they don't have to be any particular shape. They're not circles, they're not squares, they're not triangles, they're just organic shapes and that's the nature of the way the paint separates anyway when you have these cells. So that's the way you can kind of paint it, you know, to resemble is just these organic shapes that don't have any particular shape. They can be different sizes. But you really don't want them to be perfect circles anyway because none of these cells are typically perfect circles. I can even go in on this end of my canvas, it had a lot less gold. I could even go in and, you know, do some shapes here. I'm not really going to do much of that. I wanted to keep it more in the center just to show you what I was doing. But this way it kind of ties the middle together when there's a big gap where your black has separated the two sides. If you swipe, I swiped from the middle out. So sometimes, you know, it's not even. And so this is where you can come in and just be a little bit on the creative side. And it is art. So it can be anything your heart desires it to be. It doesn't have to be anything that um, 
is rigid and you almost can feel it in, you know, put it, make it feel like um, stones. You know, there's all kinds of possibilities. And then when this is sealed, it will, um, it'll have a more cohesive look because this will blend in better when it's under a coat of varnish. And it dries quickly so you can go, you can go back and coat it, you know, again and again if you need to. So I'm using my little fine brush and I'm just basically dabbing the paint into little areas. Almost kind of relaxing. It's like uh, it's like those coloring adult coloring books that they have now, where you just sit and you just do it, and you're not thinking about the real real world issues and problems in your life or anything. You're just kind of zoning out and creating and using another part of your brain. therapeutic for me, I know that. So, I, I just wanted you to know that you're, you're not bound by a pour or a swipe. If there's just something small that you don't care for on the painting, but you like the, the majority of the painting, then go back and find a way to use those same paints and embellish what you have already created. Because there's times when you do something and you love just a certain part of it and then you don't love another part of it, well, you can go back in and get a little creative. I'm throwing in a, a little bit of a heart shape here and there too. Throwing in a little bit of positivity into my painting. And every so often when you're using one of these little fine tipped brushes, the paint builds up on the brush, on the hairs, the, and so it starts um, getting thicker and thicker. So you just rinse it. Take your paper towel and bring it back to a point after you've rinsed it and then it's kind of back to where it was when you you got it new. So and the thing about pores are a lot of times especially swipes, the cells will lay out really smooth and flat and this is going to have a little dimension to it because you're painting it onto the surface. But when you put your varnish on it, that will help even it out and make it look more like it was meant to be.
Just even little dots here and there. It almost makes it feel something about these swipes when you're using the gold, especially against the dark, like the black, or when there's a, a lot of contrast. For some reason, to me, it reminds me of what we called when I was growing up in the South lightning bugs and people call them fireflies. Um, something about this effect reminds me of fireflies. It's whimsical. So that's why I'm saying even just the little gold dots here and there to fill in spaces. just reminds me of, the whole thing reminds me of fireflies in a way. There's other paint pens too. I know this was just a gel pen that I picked up a, a long time ago, so that's what I had here at the house. There's other paint pens that um, are really awesome, I know, and they, they fill in the color and people uh, embellish their pore paintings and so forth with those and, and it's really gorgeous and they give a lot of great detail so there are other brands out there besides what I'm using I just I just wanted to show you what I was doing with this one with what I had here at the house already without having to purchase anything This one I had, after I painted it, I immediately wanted to call it Purple Magic. It just has a hint of purple, you know, at either end, but um, it felt kind of magical to me. So that's why I called it Purple Magic. So I'm going to get crazy here and go over this uh, area This that doesn't have a lot of stuff going on here on this end. And y'all are going to say, what is she doing? So I'm just doing these little... They look like butterflies a little bit. And I'll... I'll bring you in closer. So I drew in some little shapes and then I'm going to go in with the gold. And just paint in some, a little bit more of the gold paint to tie it in together. I don't think I'm going to fill it in though. I want it to be kind of airy. And some little gold dots at the tip of my brush. Just filling it, in, filling it in since it's not really that much going on on the lower part. change the name of this one to something like uh, oh what can I name it so I have those oriented where they're kind of to where you would hang it vertically with the butterfly looking things near the bottom so I'm not going to do butterflies on this end I'm just going to add a few dots here and there to tie it in. There's not a whole lot of spots for them because this one was filled in pretty well with um, 
cells. Yeah, I didn't have the canvas where you could see, but here's the lower half of this one, which is pretty filled in with the, a lot of more gold. And so I'm just basically just adding a few little specks of gold here and there. Ah, uh, pixie, pixie dust. That might be what I call it, pixie dust. They're not little fairies, but they're little, little fireflies, little butterflies. And now I sound like Bob Ross, Donna. <laughs> And people ask if I sign my paintings. I have been an artist for 20 years, so I do sign all of my work. And if I feel like it's a painting that is not oriented a specific direction, then I will sign it like in the corner at a diagonal or I'll sign it on the side because I, my edges do have the paint. Um, it comes over the edge, that kind of thing. So I do, um, I do sign my paintings because I do this for a living and I want people to know it's my art. I have a reputation that I've worked on for over 20 years. So I'm signing this right here. It was called Purple Magic. But now I'm going to call it Pixie Dust. And I name my paintings. And um, that's the way that I can keep up with them on my computer, for one thing. So here it's on the back, I'll write the dimensions and what the name of it is. So I'm marking that out. Pixie Dust. That helps me remember what to call it. The other thing is you can always use a sharpie. Like if you got your gold too close to something and you wanted to separate it back, you just come in with a black sharpie and you fine tune those edges. And you separate it with the black. But I am going to seal it, and when you seal it, that will hide your Sharpie from your gold paint, from your gel pen. It'll make it all kind of blend together and work right. So, turn it back around. Make sure my little antennas are on my little pixie butterflies. So this totally changed this swipe into something a little bit more whimsical and that's fine with me. I don't care. I like it. That's the fun part about being an artist is you kind of get to do what you want to do with your own art, right? So, do a little swirl here and there. I'm going to zoom out. So that gives you a better idea of how the black was like really, really solid in the middle through this area. It was really just kind of solid. So I have painted in dots and blobs and swirls and that kind of stuff. and. Can you see the butterflies? Turn it this way. So on the end, 
that had less of the gold, I just added in the little butterflies here and there. And little dots. So there it is. And I added dots on this end, but it didn't need a whole lot because it had more stuff going on. So all I did was add the little dots of, of gold paint. <clears throat> So there it is. Zoom out and you can see the, the whole thing. And then I'll put a nice glossy coat of varnish or two over it and it'll be gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. See here's the peacock one I did which this one had kind of the line at the top. I don't think I, I want to say I used my pool trowel to swipe this one with when I did, I did a pair of them. <clears throat> but, you know, these could even go together because they're so similar, you know, as far as I've got two of these. I could put one on either side. I have one that looks like a peacock feather that doesn't have the black, but it has the turquoises and the purples and <clears throat> There's that shiny Liquitex gloss varnish, high gloss varnish. How good that looks with just one coat. So, that is embellishing a swipe. And I hope you learned something from it and enjoyed watching it just to get ideas. Thank you for coming to my channel all the time or if it's your first time thank you for showing up and I look forward to doing more fun stuff with you on my channel so I this is towards the end of the video and I had painted and then I had done um, in the middle I had used a gold gel pen by Pentel and I had I had done little lines and everything in the middle that was previously in the video so when I went to put the polyurethane on it or the varnish as I was brushing it on with my sponge brush it took every bit of the gel pen off and smeared it a little bit now the, the shapes that I painted in with gold they're still there from the acrylic paint from Deco Art. This was glorious gold. But the gel pen did not stay. So I do not recommend this at all. Use it on paper and not on paintings. So I just want to let you know that. So I'm just putting a little water to rinse my brush if I need to. And I'm going to finish painting the center of this. You had seen me do it before. So I'm just going to go back in and do kind of the same thing. But I wanted you to see how it totally took out the gel pen that I had used in the center. It just totally wiped it off. So, learn from your mistakes, right? I'm not going to talk through this so I can speed through it when I edit the video and then you won't have to suffer and watch through the whole thing again. And I'm going to do it differently this time, just larger scale, because I can't get as fine a detail with the paintbrush that I could with the gel pen. And also, before I put this on fast forward, I had to repaint in the black over the polyurethane, but you can't see it because the black is halfway glossy it's not super flat 
So it blends in with the polyurethane. You can't see that I, where I painted added the black back in. So that's a good thing. And then if I need to go back and like fine tune any black edges, I can do that with the permanent marker. It makes a nice crisp line and it does not show once you polyurethane it. So this is just, you know, cleaning up my edges. So that just shows basically, I just added the gold back in and just different blobs and shapes and I didn't do all the swirlies that I did with the fine pen. It just, it's not possible with that paint, the thickness of it. And um, so it's there. It's done. It's filled in. I've got my little butterflies still at the bottom that were painted in. And so I'll take a picture of it and it'll be at the end of the video as the finished picture. So thank you for watching. And if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And please subscribe to my channel. Thank you. So here's my canvas that I just finished putting the gold on. It's dry. I've got a Ziploc bag. I'm going to write on here Liquitex 326. The reason I do that is I use a sponge brush, and after I use the sponge brush, I put it in the Ziploc bag. And keep it sealed up and you can use it over and over and over again as long as you don't get any other paint colors mixed into it or whatever so I'm starting with a brand new sponge brush I've got what's left of my Liquitex I've got some more coming from Amazon So I'll show you again what I do is I squirt on a healthy amount of Liquitex and actually somebody on YouTube or Facebook and I put this on pretty quickly I don't you don't waste any time because this sets up pretty quickly but I saw somebody on Facebook using a silicone sponge brush and if you if you've never seen one it is uh, it almost looks like a gel pad that you would put in your shoe like whoops like you know that you would put in the end of your shoe to cushion your heel so it looks like that So 
So you see I'm putting on a healthy amount. I don't have one of those silicone makeup sponges, but I'm going to get one because she applied her, her varnish with the, the silicone makeup sponge and she said it was fabulous. It didn't leave any strokes or anything. But if you do this with your sponge brush and you put on a pretty healthy amount so it's nice and thick. But it's not thick as in thickness, it's just pretty deep. You make sure all your ends and sides are covered and you're very lightly sweeping over the surface and looking in the reflection to just make sure that there's no missed areas. And I take this brush and put it in my Ziploc bag, seal it up, make sure there's no air in it, and I keep it just like this and I use it over and over again. On the same painting, if you do multiple coats or on multiple paintings, that was one coat and it's like super thick. It's nice and glossy. Liquitex varnish like polyacrylic from Minwax. They're both very watery fluid varnishes and um, can you see? Can you see how wet that is and shining? It'll it'll get a little duller when it dries. It won't. It might not be that shiny, but it's going to be pretty close to it. So, just wanted you to see that. So here is pixie dust embellished. And I will put a picture of it at the end of the video when it's dried. And thank you for watching.